So in this video, we're going to look at how to turn a set of text items on the screen, which should be URLs into actual clickable URLs using JavaScript without asking the developers to change the application. So here's the situation. I was on the testing circus website and I was looking at their list of testers and I was going, I'm not sure I follow all those people. So I wanted to click on these links and make sure I was following these people, but these links are not clickable. How can you make a page with links that are not clickable? It doesn't matter. I could email them and say, Hey, look, the links on your page are not clickable, but I don't know how long it's going to take them to do that and fix that. And I need to do this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this for myself using JavaScript. And as an added bonus, we're going to turn it into a bookmarklet so that every time I come back to this page, I can do it again. So we're going to cover bookmarklets and changing these links. So let's do that. So I need to go into the console because I'm going to start writing code. In fact, I'm going to do this the slow way. So I'm going to walk you through this process and explain it bit by bit. So first of all, I'm going to inspect this. I can see that all these links are in a, a TD. I could probably do better than that. But first of all, I'm just going to get all the links that have got a TD. And the easiest way for me to do that, document dot get elements by CC. So you can see I'm in the console, I'm writing JavaScript and I've got code completion. So I'm going to use that to help me. I don't have to remember everything. So I'm going to say get elements by tag name. I do tab there to complete it. I want every tag that is a TD that will return a an array of all the TDs. So I guess what I want then is I want to iterate over that array. So I will then have indexes like zero, one, two, three, and I want to get the uh, the text in there. So the inner HTML. So you can see here that the first one doesn't have a link. Does the second one? No. So we're still in the headings. So I've got zero, one, two, three, four, five should be a link. Let's have a look. Woo so what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over all of these and anything that is a link. I will process that makes sense. So how would I check if something is a link? Uh, I would say if the inner HTML dot starts with, and let's say they all look like HTTPS links. Oh yeah. Cause they're all on Twitter. <laughs> HTTPS. I thought it was linked at my website, which I haven't moved to HTTPS yet. So if I say starts with HTTPS, this should return a true. In fact, I don't need the if to get it to return true. True. So I could loop over all of the tags searching for that. When I find it, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to say if the inner HTML starts with that, then let's change the inner HTML to be uh, an anchor tag. So at this point, I'm going to switch over to the uh, snippets editor, this new snippet. Uh, what where are we testing circus? I want to see if the inner HTML dot starts with HTTPS colon slash slash. Now the snippets view is really just a, a JavaScript editor, which lets me run code. So I'm going to let's store this. Oops. Let me just completely mess up the code. Let me store this in a variable. So that's the element. Yep. And this will get replaced by something in a loop when I'm finished with this. So I'll get the element, I'll get the text, which is going to be the element dot inner HTML, that's going to be the, the string value. So then what I can say is here. So if the text starts with HTTPS, 
and it's showing me syntax highlighting and showing me I've got a syntax error, so that's good. So if the text starts with HTML, then I'm going to say element dot inner HTML equals, and then we're going to build up what should be a link, ahref equals quote plus the link, which is going to be the text. Then I'm going to close the href. Then I'm going to put in the link itself. Then I'm going to close the anchor tag. So if this works, then we should see this as a link. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this snippet. And hopefully that is now a link. That is now clickable. I can go off to that website. Woohoo! So what I'm going to do now is let's make this a loop. So I want to get all the elements with the tag name TD. So I'll go var elements. Then for var link ID equals, let's start at zero and go around all of them, elements dot length, then link ID plus plus, that's my loop. There we go, so we want the, so long as the link ID is less than the length of the array that we got with all the TDs, so we're going to loop around all the TDs, check for each of these links, does it start with HTTPS? If it does, then make it a link. So let's run this. I'm expecting this to work. Oh, look, all of those are now links. Let's check and see if they work. Let's just pick someone at random. Oh, I don't know. Let's pick me. And there we go. It links across. So now I have some code which amends the page. Now I'm doing this really crudely. I'm just tagging things onto the inner HTML. There are different ways of amending the DOM in JavaScript, but this is good enough for my purposes. Now what I want to do is I want to turn this into a bookmarklet. So the way that works is all I'm going to do is take this code and then I'm going to use an app that I've written, this create bookmarklets app. And I'm going to call this testing circus Twitter links. And then I'm going to make the bookmarklets. So all, all I do is I take the code that I've written, paste it in here. That's all the code that was in the snippets. Say, OK. It now, if we hover over this, has created a JavaScript function and it has URL encoded all the uh, code and it's put it in a link. So what I can now do is I can take that link and I can just drag it onto my bookmark and then if I refresh this page, all the links are back to not links. I'm not going to run the snippet. I am going to run my bookmarklet. Then everything is changed. So this demonstrates the power of bookmarklets for our testing. We've got code that we can execute on our uh, pages whenever we want just by clicking on here. So if you're working on an application, you've got a bookmark that creates test data, you can execute it. Because this is Chrome and I'm logged into Chrome, this will now sync across to my Mac. So if I was testing on the Mac, I still have access to the bookmarklet. That's very useful. So let me just show you in the snippets what a bookmarklet code actually looks like. I didn't save it. <laughs> Fortunately, it's still in my clipboard. Ooh, that was lucky. So in JavaScript, at the console, if I type that in, it will run. Right? It will just run straight away. The other way of getting things to run in JavaScript is I can wrap it in a uh, function. I can make things function. So I could say uh, tc equals function, and then it is all the code there. If I do this, jump back to the console, I'll refresh this page. I paste that in, say tc equals this function, nothing happens. That's because I created a function called tc, which if I execute the function, will cause it to work. 
Now that we know how to create a function, what I can do is instead of allocating that function to a variable, I could just run that function directly as an anonymous function. Bam. Now, the way it works as a bookmarklet, bookmarklet is simply that an anonymous function with JavaScript colon in the front to make a link. Now, if I took this, let me paste that onto the bookmarks. There we go. So that has pasted that JavaScript function in there. So if I refresh this, hit that link, it all works. So you can either write code, check that it works, wrap it in an anonymous function that runs immediately and put JavaScript on the front, then copy and paste it into your bookmarks or write the code that you want, then go off to a tool like this one, use the tool to create the bookmark link, then just drag it But Covered a lot of stuff there. So you've seen um, code completion in the console. You've seen me write JavaScript, which amends a page. You've seen me convert text into clickable links. You've seen me convert that JavaScript code into a bookmark and use it as a bookmarklet, which interacts with the application. And in Chrome, bookmarklets will sync across different browsers. Whew. That was a lot of stuff. That was actually useful. I can now check whether I subscribe to these people because I'm pretty sure that Twitter unsubscribes me from people that I've subscribed to. So I'm going to go through this list, see who I'm following.